and welcome back to Enter the Pot vs. Graham McMillan! Hello there, how are you? I'm so terrified, how are you? <laughs> Don't be terrified, everything's lovely. For once, I have a sunny day, so I, everything is great. I say I that like, like you can see the window, but you can't. You're being very blessed right now because you are not going to a convention this weekend. <laughs> yeah, I know. It's 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 very exciting for me. I get to stay home. I get to stay home. I say that, but like Star Wars is, what, two weeks away? Yeah. Oh, this is, is so funny. Um, We just had Tiffany on and Tiffany and I also <laughs> talked about Star Wars. <laughs> it's, just... it's, big, it's big in our minds. It's big in our minds. I feel like this is very illuminating for all the viewers, like how large Star Wars just like it's the behemoth on the horizon. It, it is the, it is the thing that none of us think past. We're like, and then there's Star Wars, and maybe there's something after that? Who knows? Who can say? Before that, though, I brought you here to talk about comic books. You and I have talked a lot about uh, traditional capes and tights Western comics, but that's actually a super teeny tiny part of the market, and we got some really exciting news this week about one of the more beloved franchises. You wrote about it, so I brought you here to be expert. Dogman, Dogman, Dogman. What's going on with Dogman? (laughs) Dogman has a new book uh, coming out. It is Dogman 20,000 Fleas Under the Sea, Cute. which is a great name. All of the titles, or most of the titles, are based on classic literature, which is a cute thing that, you know, the parents will get and the kids will really not care about one way or the other. Um, it is the 11th book in the series, and it is probably going to be the top-selling comic of the year. Because Dogman is massive, enormously big in a way that I think... People who follow superhero comics just have no idea about it. Mm-hmm. That is one of my favorite things about the way the market works right now is everybody thinks that Batman is the king and then everything else is below that. But it's actually like Dave Pilkey and Raina Telgemeier are the co-reigning regents of yeah. And, and by books. so much more, by so much more. Yeah. I mean, in 2021, which is the last time a Dogman book came out, not only was the 10th Dogman book, the top-selling book of the year. Not comic, the top-selling book, book of the year. <laughs> but uh, three Dogman titles showed up in the top 25 of the year. Yeah. Like, that's how big it is. Dogman is a massive, massive, massive thing. And have you ever read a Dogman book? I have read the first three Dogman books. The origin of Dogman is so absolutely insane okay for anybody who doesn't know tell us <laughs> okay so dogman is literally what the name suggests yes he, he starts off uh, he starts this is gonna sound weird there is a cop and his dog greg and they get blown up and then they get sewed together by a surgeon who just sticks the dog's head on the human body and then he's dogman it's it's That's it. both uh, Nickelodeon's cat dog, if anyone remembers that cartoon from like yeah, the yeah. 90s, early aughts, but also Luther from the Umbrella Academy, like sewing his head onto the gorilla body. It is it is the strangest thing. And also like the Dogman conceit is the weirdest thing because Dogman is a fictional character inside the Dogman books mm-hmm. created by the two kids from Captain Underpants. Yes, it's it's if you grew up in the Captain Underpants generation, I feel like if you have children now, your children are reading Dogman and Captain Underpants was the same type of thing. Captain Underpants was a story that was dismissed because it was seen as silly or crass for like a young audience that didn't understand. And I think Dogman is seen the same way by people who aren't into comic books or silly books or funny well, books. Uh, but that's just it. Like, they are silly and crass. Like, Captain Underpants is literally called Captain Underpants. Oh, 100%. You know, like, it is just fart jokes. But when you're a kid, that's the greatest thing in the world. Dogman. But also, don't we want kids reading? <laughs> no, no. But, all, but for real, like, but also, like, Dogman is also silly. Like, yes. we just said the origin. You understand that this is not, a, you know, this is not <laughs> the, the deepest literature in the world. But when you're a kid, this is the greatest thing. I'm a big fan of kids' comics. Like, I grew up reading, you know, British kids' comics, like the Beano and the Dandy, which are short, silly, dumb strips, right? But they get you reading when you don't want Mm -hmm. to read anything else. You know, right now in the UK, there's something called the Phoenix, which is the same thing. Yes. It's amazing because it gets kids reading when otherwise they would just want to play video games or, or watch TV. I sound so old. But, the, you know, there are, there are countless other things for them to do. And it's strips like this. It's, it's books like Dogman that gets kids going, oh, reading's actually great. 
I think this news is so fascinating coming out this week because it sort of comes on the heels of the comic books versus manga discussion that is currently uh, tearing Twitter apart. Yes. And I think that middle grade and YA in all publishing is seen with the same type of derision that romance is. And I think it is actually a pillar of what is holding up publishing. And I think yes. Dogman is, is along with like Raina's books are holding up comic books as a genre, Western comics as a genre as well. Well, but the whole thing is also like, this is, you know, this is the entry into the medium that they might end yeah. up going, well, I want to read Batman or I want to read Umbrella Academy or I want to read, you know, any of the quote unquote more respectable comics. More this respectable. You, you know what I mean, right? I do, but it's just really funny to hear you say it like that. <laughs> but but these like this is what gets them reading in the first place, and also this yeah. is what teaches them the language of comics. Yes. You know, like you can't you can't look at something like you know what Reina does or or what Dave Pelkey does, and not see that like these are incredibly important books mm -hmm. that will get kids excited about the medium of comics, and then going on to reading, you know, whatever. As a result, this, this, these are the, the most important books out there for people who care about comics as a medium. Can you go into a little more like teaches kids the language of comics, like maybe break down for people the idea of uh, like sequential storytelling? Well, I mean, so this is a weird thing that happens. Comics is a, is a language that has to be learned. Mm -hmm. You know, a lot of people, a lot of uh, adults, especially who didn't grow up reading comics, don't understand that comics is not words and pictures, but it's the combination of words and pictures. Yes. And that it's the interplay between the two that create a third thing, right? And it's something I think you have to learn early, or if you're older, you actually have to work at learning. You mm -hmm. can't just read it and think, well, I read the words and then look at the pictures, or vice versa, because it is the interplay between the two that's important. That That's what makes a comic work. And the, the space that that creates inside your brain, right? What's funny is uh, I had this conversation with, heavy name drop jeff drexler who's a, a the lawyer who uh, works on gender queer thanks um, <laughs> no but, but he he is this whole theory and he's entirely right about the world as it is today works on comic logic the internet works on an interplay between words and image uh, -huh. uh visual language works on an interplay between word and image that is taught to us by comics Mm -hmm. And when you see people complain about things like genderqueer, in many respects, it's because they literally don't understand what's happening in the story. Mm -hmm. One of the complaints in Virginia about genderqueer was based on a misunderstanding that the text was talking about one thing, the image was talking about something else, and they were not talking about the same thing. Yeah. And, and as he pointed out, if people understood how comics worked, they wouldn't have such complaints. They wouldn't be thinking that the comics are saying something they're not. So what I'm hearing is that we all need to pick up this new volume of Dogman and send it to hateful legislatures so that they will come to understand the medium better as a whole. <laughs> yes, uh, in part because everyone should learn how comics work. Secondly, let's get Dave Pilkey's sales up even more. I don't know why. He like, he's it. already going to be the yeah. <laughs> you think, you think you need it? Um, yeah, but no, like the, these books are really important. You know, these books are something that teach people the language that is how the world works now. But it's also how comics work, and therefore you can use to push back against complaints about a gender queer or mm -hmm. you know any other quote unquote controversial comic. I also think that if you, as a reader who is somebody probably outside of the suggested age range for books like these, if you're dismissing books like this, then that's also gatekeeping, and that is a huge problem in like specifically capes and tights comics and yeah. great storytelling transcends mediums, genre, age brackets, et cetera, et cetera. It's one of the reasons why I think Batman the Animated Series is one of the most successful Batman stories of all time. And you can show that to a five-year-old or a 105-year-old. And if anyone here is watching and is just kind of dismissing this out of hand, I would be like, do yourself a favor and pick up the first Dogman book. Go get it from your local comic book shop or your local library and check it out. If for nothing else than to read what Graham was just describing <laughs> to you in the origin, because it's incredible. <laughs> no, but also like, you're right about it being gatekeeping, but it's also mm -hmm. not everything has to be for you. You know, what? And that's, something, that's something that I think that a lot of comic fans actually have a problem with. Yeah. I remember at Emerald City, I was moderating one of the panels and someone basically said, well, you know, why aren't these comics sold to me anymore? Mm -hmm. And all the panelists said, rightfully, like, they shouldn't be. 
if we want comics to be a successful medium, if we want comics to be a successful business, it should be appealing to everyone. Yep. You know, it should appeal to absolutely every age range and people want absolutely every story. And so, for me, at least as a reader, some of my favorite comics of the last few years have been things that theoretically should not appeal to me. You know, Can I've you been, name some of them for us? Uh, I remember, again, this sounds like a name drop and it's not meant to, but I remember I was uh, a judge for the Eisners in 2018. Mm -hmm. And as a result, you read a lot of books you otherwise would never have read. Yeah. Uh, and I found Eleanor Davis's work, Me and a Bike in a Road, was mm -hmm. one of them. And I'd, I'd never, like I'd heard of her, but I'd never read her stuff before. And it, it like blew me away very much. Uh, my brother's husband was one of the books as well, uh, the, the manga. So good. That book is it's, so it, good. It's absolutely beautiful, right? We'll but again, it, oh, you very, very much will cry. But it was another book that I would have thought, well, you know, it's not for me. I'm not, you know, I don't read a lot of manga. I don't read a lot of romance books. But reading that was just, well, this is, this is amazing. And this is so touching. And this is so, like, emotionally impactful. But also, this is just great comics. Mm -hmm. like all the way through like th there are things that they're doing here that i as a fan of comics i'm just like well you know good for you and talk the same talk has tricks in it we were just like that's just good that's just good <laughs> comics <laughs> also very few stories in any comics genre nowadays gets to 11 volumes and these are not released as single issues these are released what we think of as like Eastern manga style, a full graphic novel. Mm -hmm. And this is volume 11. Like we should, when was the last time we got volume 11 of The Flash? That wasn't a complete collection across his entire run. Like any comic book creator or reader should be so lucky. And I will say this about uh, Dogman. There have never been complaints about a dip in quality. No, no. Dogman is incredibly consistent. Yeah. Dog, dog, but also... You look back, like, Dogman is consistent with Cats and Underpants, which uh -huh. started, you know, 20 years ago. Like, yeah. Dave Pilkey's been doing this for a long time and is really good at this, you know? And also, something else that he's done is, so Dogman, last Dogman was two years ago, because he took a break to do a spin-off series, uh, Cat Kid Comic. That's right! <laughs> <laughs> I'm, I'm, glad, I'm glad see you could have said it and saved me trying to remember the name absolutely not I was actually looking um, to see if my cat was in here and uh, sadly he's not <laughs> but that's you know that's also serious that teaches kids like literally teaches kids comics yep you know how to make comics how to read comics again I cannot express how important these comics are <laughs> can I express how good these comics are and how vital this Reina you know the first second uh, YA books mm -hmm. you know everything manga are for if you care about comics these are the things that are getting the kids who are not reading it into it these, and here's how you future. know that this is the future even for capes and tights because dc kids is doing this same thing and some of the consistently best series and the most exciting comics that dc has done in years are those dc kids books that raven yep. the teen yep. titan series the new green lantern mm -hmm. mara like all of those books are so consistently excellent in a way that in my opinion, um, controversial, the, the floppies aren't, and maybe it's because those are more what I want to read than what traditional superheroes are doing right now. But the sales oh, also back up Ashley's opinion. <laughs> one, one of the things that's also good is with the YA books, the DC mm -hmm. YA books in particular, if you don't know the creators, you can still be assured that you're going to get a good story. 100%. Do you know what I mean? Like the, cur the curation of that line is amazing. Yeah. You know, you really know you are going to get good stuff every time you pick up one of those books. And again, like, I am very much outside the demographic for those books. I am, you know, decades outside the demographic. I mean, at 14 books. years old, you're ancient, Graham, I understand. 14? Bless you. Look at this <laughs> face. Look at this face. I was going to say 40 <laughs> still kind. Um, <laughs> but, they're, but they're good, right? Mm -hmm. You know, like, again, they're they're good comics, but also as someone who's a fan of those characters. They're just good, you know, it's a good Flash story, it's a good Aquaman story, it's a good Green Lantern story. Mm -hmm. Okay, Graham, we're going to convention season. You're being spared, but where can people find you next in person if they want to run up on you and let oh, you know yeah, their thoughts about Dogman? You've got to be in the UK and you, you'll see me at Star Wars Celebration. That's right! Graham, I will be the one jet lagged. You will be the one jet lagged. We will... Please bring caffeine. Graham and I will need it. Graham <laughs> McMillan, thank you so much for joining us and talking Dogman on Enter the Potverse today. Goodbye, goodbye, goodbye.